people only think a joke. Ringo, you check say, yeah, come out, yeah. And you know I'm putting in some work. Great to meet you guys. Okay. Like and subscribe to Ringo Vision, the best cooking channel on YouTube. people yeah and being here today thank you very much everybody yeah i'm here have a look i'm here with bushcraft tools everybody yeah and he's invited me up to his forest very much different so have a look at all of these um this, these, these huts that he's built this is this is a little village and bushcraft is on camera with me right now everyone yeah so bushcraft could you just just how how did you get into all of this all right so as you might have heard in our previous video yesterday yeah. when I was talking about primitive ways and it's something that I like to try and recreate practice yeah. you know whether it's for fun or or um or whether it's just to teach people and this is like a bed with like a, a bed rest basically it's just a, it's just it's called a, it's like a primitive wigwam and it's made out of cedar bark so okay. pretty much the bark that grows on these trees these are cedar trees and you can peel the bark off and you end up with Shit. right so yeah we're in my woodland and as you might have heard, I do like to practice and do different primitive things. What am I talking about? Basket weaving, foraging, uh, cooking over fire in different ways, building shelters. I love that. This is what I'm all about. So we're over here, we've got a log cabin. This is a log cabin built just by using cedar wood that's been sourced from this woodland. I filled all the gaps with moss. I've actually put a tarp, a plastic tarp on the roof but you'll notice that this isn't a 100% primitive um, shelter. It's more of a modern shelter using primitive or an old way of building. This tarp, you know, there are lots of ways of building a shelter, but having a tarp, it's really gonna make sure you don't get wet. Yeah, and I see you've got um, Amber with you today in the woods. You've got Amber in the woods, yeah? But come over to this shelter. So that shelter's got a tarp. Yeah. This shelter doesn't have a tarp. This is a traditional shelter. And what it is, it's a thatched roof shelter with mud walls and hazel frames. Again, oh, I've, wow, just built, wicked. I've built all of this just using a knife, a saw and an axe. So have a look at this everyone, look. And this is a thatched roof. So this stuff, it's about, the roof's about that thick. Goes all the way, or all the way around it. Rain, when it hits it, it doesn't go through, it hits it and it runs off. Okay. It stays dry in there the whole time. And and, and, and I, I can see that you've got like chimneys coming through the top of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> and you've got a ladder around, around the back as well. So the chimney. After experimenting and realizing how smoky these get and doing a bit of research, it seems that back in the day, these are really smoky places inside here. Yeah. But apart from their cure meat, they'd hang meat in the top of there where it'd be smoky to cure that so you could have it cured, stored for longer. But I, although it was quite authentic having the smoke, I didn't like it. No yeah. one wants to put their head in smoke when they stand up. Yeah. So I just put in two man-made modern plastic bits of um, like drain pipe. It just gets the smoke out. But you still get this lovely authentic feel inside. Good vibes. So here we've got a ladder. This was made out of cedar wood. Again, most of the woodland, uh, the wood in, in this woodland is cedar wood. For example, this. This is cedar. This, you might see that. Yeah. That isn't cedar. That is beech. And this one here, just from looking at the bark right there, you can see that is ash. Ash. Ash, yeah, great one. It's actually what we cooked with yesterday. We cooked the crab. Okay, okay. Uh, using ash. Hey, this took about 12 days to make. You hear that, everyone? Yeah. 12 hard days. To make this so yeah man big up bushcraft for inviting me to the forest today so everyone uh, something a little bit different i'm going to be giving you today um guys yeah 
car you know i've been doing the um the forest down in london so now i've actually come down to the country to come and link bushcraft to to, to come and do some foraging he's going to show me what are the correct type of woods to cook with and what are the correct type of woods to easily to start a fire and things like that and as you can see he's he's been doing his experiment and he's been him doing things making things look at his little village that he's got here like do you know what i mean like it's so amazing to actually come inside of the woodlands everyone and yeah bushcraft has actually created a small village inside of the woodlands people yeah so it's amazing so yeah bushcraft you must invite me down one time for us to come and, and do some camping yes it's serious camping yeah so what are you going to do now i'm going to split some wood i need to get this wood it's not going to split very well yeah because it's a bit of a knot okay so uh i'll chip away i'll chip away at this and then i'm going to saw a bit of wood so we can get a fire going okay okay as i said it's too knotty it's a knotty bit of wood is going to be hard to split through we want something with a straight grain okay so for example got a nice bit of dry wood here take this over here and we'll saw it up so you've even got a work map <laughs> hey yeah. whoa outside people and i think a joke I ring of vision and bushcraft tools outside car. Bushcraft, what's that? What? Are them things that you are travel with? Yeah, this is my uh Let, oh, wait, this wait. Is my saw. Let's have a look. I ain't seen one like this one before. And look at this people, this saw is proper sharp. This don't seem like the saw that you'd see like the builders builders use. This is this is working. Ready? Yeah. It's about to fall off. Got it? Yeah, I got it. There you are. Can I just, can I, can I just get a, a one? I just want to see how it, it just seemed like it was. Bushcraft, this is nothing like using the saw that you would use um, if you're on a building site. True. This, this seems like it's just a lot easier to work and a lot easier to get things things going and chop, chop your wood. Yeah man, a good vibe, I like that. Yeah, I'm not going to cut all the way through people, but I just wanted to actually see what it was like. Yeah, I think you should close this down. Yeah, just to see what it was like. But yeah man, that tool there is a serious little piece of tool there. No jolting people. Yeah man. Wait, I've got another one. Yeah? It's actually sharper than that. But I might have left it. I might have left it in the car. Oh no, here it is. Okay. Bigger teeth, sharper teeth. This cuts through bone. This is a really good one. And if you like what you see guys put a comment in the comment section and if you do a little bit if you do a little bit of diy at home as well put a comment in the comment section and let me know what kind of diy you do at home separately from cooking because you know say yes people 24 hour kitchen and we're giving you something very much different today people our good vibes yeah man we're outside Hey, here's a little tip. If you've ever, if you've ever got a piece of wood that won't stand up straight, use another one as a safety stick. See that? Again, rather than use your fingers and go down, safety stick. Yeah, look. So I'm just using an axe. And I'm just splitting down some wood. 
this cedar wood. Because we're gonna light a fire in a minute. And as you know, with fire lighting, it's all about, fire lighting is all in the preparation. A bit like cooking. You want everything ready, pans hot, oil out, veg cut, diced, whatever, sliced. So for me, I've got lots of bigger bits of wood, I've got lots of smaller bits, and then I've got some really small bits. What we're gonna do is we're gonna light a fire. As soon as we get that flame, we're gonna put these bits of wood on because you can hear. Can you hear you're, that? You're making a beat. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny, uh, yeah. So you can hear, it's like there's a chime to it. You hear that kind of high-pitched chime? That's when you know, it's a good telltale sign. That's when you know your wood's dry. Otherwise it would be wet and heavy and have like a dull thump, like a, not like that, but you know what I mean. Anyway, see, so yeah, I'm just cutting some wood up and then we're gonna light a fire. All right, people, when they think a joke, Bushcraft has showed me his style, primitive way of how he will normally do things. So yeah, man, Matt, Matt taking the lesson, people, and I'm giving you lot the lesson as well. Yeah, man, a good vibes, Bushcraft. So I'm just breaking up, getting lots of these little bits because these are going to be the first pieces to go on as soon as I've got that small, delicate flame. Then I'll put these on and then I'll work up to the bigger bits. Yes, people, as you can see where I'm going right now, yeah, bushcraft is just... Okay, I'm going to talk you through what, what we've just done. We've sworn a bit of wood, a bit of cedar wood. We've then split it using an axe. With the axe as well, we've graded the wood into three different sizes, small, medium, and large. Obviously, you put the small on the fire first. Then I've used the inner fibers, the inner strands from the bark of the cedar wood. So again, I picked up that bit of wood, I pulled off a bit of bark. And on the inside of the bark, there are lots of fibers. By scraping the fibers back and forth, you can create a bit of a, a, a nest, a fibrous nest, which then I use, well, which is at which point I use my fire steel. So these things, you've probably all seen these. In fact, they're just a giant version of what's inside a lighter that creates sparks. And they're called fire steels and they shoot off these really hot sparks. When you land these onto a dry fibrous material, being some dried bark, some different types of dried mushrooms, even dried grass, you could even land on dried toilet roll or cotton or cotton wool. It'll go up instantly. Mind the gunshots, they're doing a bit of shooting back there, but we are right. There's enough trees between here and there for us not to get hit. And also they're shooting the other direction, so don't worry. Remember, we're cooking chicken, a whole chicken without a grill. All we have is a knife and a saw, maybe an ax. So as you've just seen, we've got some hazel. We've been to find a bit of hazel, we've got that. And I've now just collected or foraged for a bit of wild garlic. Have a look at this. So this is wild garlic. Quite often you can tell, you can smell it before you even see it. Wild garlic has a very strong aroma of garlic. And these have recently finished flowering and now start to produce seeds. You can actually pickle these and, uh, and eat them. Um, yeah, I've never really done it, but I've tried them and they're not too bad. 
Uh, is it worth it? I don't know. But what I do do is I dry these leaves and the flowers and I put them into salt. And the salt, it just, it, it just flavors the salt great for steak. Anyway, this is wild garlic. We only need a few leaves. So let's head back to camp. Ow. These wild garlics, what's underneath them? Is there any little pods of garlic underneath them? There are, lot, there are little bulbs underneath them. But to be honest with you, the main thing we, we concentrate on are just these leaves. Yeah. The amount of flavor you'll get even out of one leaf is incredible. Okay. So I've got a question for everyone watching. Does anyone, has anyone actually ever found any wild garlic? You quite often find it in, in woodlands, maybe in parks, or maybe where there's a stream. You'll often find or smell wild garlic. And right now it's, it's in season. Again, it is just flowering, it, it's just flowered, it's producing seeds. So within the next few weeks, these leaves will all die off and it will come back next year. But yeah, comment below, who has found wild garlic or knows of a patch of wild garlic where you live yes everybody as you can see we're out in the forest we've got some um wild garlic here yeah man we're gonna go back and season our chicken right now people yeah man it's a good vibe being outside and i hope you guys are enjoying this video and if you like what you see people and you like what's going on in the forest and you like to see me more in the forest doing some cooking obviously today is not too much you're not seeing too much cooking but at the same time people yeah you're seeing the different the different side of nature i'm just giving you a different side of nature everybody yeah man so a good vibe so we're out here with amber today yeah man a good vibe okay look some of you watching you might think what is that word bushcraft that ringo keeps talking about well look, my channel is bushcraft tools but bushcraft for me it's a way of using nature to its fullest advantage what i mean is that look knowing what to use out there will really help you. You want to see nature as resources. This is nature's tinfoil, but we're going to use it to prep our chicken on. We've also got some to flavor our chicken and we've got some non-toxic, oh, in fact, we don't want that piece. We've got some non-toxic wood being hazel, which we're going to use for cooking. These will be our utensils as well. Again, bushcraft is using nature and using it as a resource, like we have been doing for thousands of years. Like people to think a joke, yeah? Cause bushcraft, say, yeah. Ringo, you check say, yeah, come out, yeah? And you know, I'm putting in some work. We just had you a tool to well. You have to put in some work. You see what it feels like when you get into your own forest. So, yeah, putting in some work. And people, I need some of these tools. Bushcraft has got all the tools. I don't have no tools. I ain't got no utensils. Yeah, man, I need all the support I can get everyone, yeah? Big up yourselves. You know what time it is. Yeah, man. <laughs> Rotted, telling you, say, yeah, that was some work there, people. It's not a joke. Yeah, but I'm loving it still. And I hope you guys are enjoying this. Yeah, and yeah, everything will go on today, people. Yeah. It's just a nice bit of root and we're going to use this for binding the chicken onto the stick in a minute.
So look what I've got now people, so what's happening right now, we've got the chicken in the fire people, a mad move. Look at this everyone, as you can see here, yeah, the chicken is roasting nice and slowly, people. It's not it's not burning, it's getting a nice bit of smoke at the same time, people, yeah. Yeah man, a, a good vibe, bushcraft tools and Ringo Vision 24 hour kitchen. We are outside, yeah. As you can see earlier on, bushcraft showed me a little demonstration through the forest and showed me one and two things. But right now we're up on a cooking vibe, you know, say so Ringo Vision, we're in at the kitchen now. So, you know, so I cook, we are cooking, we can't make the chicken burn up, people, yeah. Cause I roast chicken, we are roast chicken in the jungle. And right now, you know, say so it's a vibe and I'm there with the man himself, bushcraft. Yeah man, and we're not gonna make this one burn up in a bushcraft. Yeah man, it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing you got going on because look people In fact, I'm going to talk to yours first no. Right, little update So I've just made this This is wild garlic mayonnaise and I think this is going to go really well with the chicken Once the chicken's done, we're just going to pull like a shred of chicken beautifully cooked dip them in this wild garlic mayo and I think this is going to take it to another level because it always does. Do you want to try it? I'm not a mayo fan. You taste the garlic. In fact, we've only made it like five minutes ago. Ideally, you'd want it to infuse overnight. I was just about to say, I can taste the slight infusion going on in there with the flavours and stuff like that. So, and, and the garlic here, gives more, gives, yeah, aftertaste. I can taste the aftertaste of the garlic. Oh, it's got a really strong aftertaste. That's yeah. why you never really want to use too much of it. Good vibes. Yeah, man, people. So a chicken a roast, pan the fire. When you think a joke, me in the jungle. I miss it. A chicken a roast, pan the fire. When you think a joke, we in the forest. In the jungle. I walk go on. And say so we there. Yeah, man, you know, say we there, people. Yeah, good vibes. Yeah, man, we don't know, say we have to have a good vibes. And you know, say we outside. Yeah man, like, comment and subscribe man because if you like what you see man, just like, comment and subscribe people because you know say, we dip on the vibes and it's season 4 and you know say, we there, we're outside. What we say? We say season 4 and we there and we outside. So if you like what you see, just subscribe people because are good vibes. Yeah man. chicken roasting chicken is a simple 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 process everyone yeah but we don't burn the chicken and you can manage your fire very good 
yeah man you're good to go as long as you don't burn up your chicken people yeah you don't know so you're gonna get a good roast chicken just take time don't make make sure that there's not too much fire underneath the chicken and make sure that there's the right amount of fire underneath the chicken as well and yeah man are good vibes Yeah, we good? We rolling? Alright everyone, so we're there man. So look, I got someone to introduce to you people here, yeah, car, we're there you know car. Come in, come in my general car. <laughs> yeah man, my car no joke thing in you know, car, we're there you know car. Yeah man, introduce yourself to the people I'm quick and fast. Hey, I'm Care. That's all I got. So Great care. to meet you guys. So like and subscribe to Ringo Vision, the best cooking channel on YouTube. But big up yourself this morning though, because you did- you Big did, up to you, you Ringo, you, because Pleasure you did bring, to meet you. you did bring me to the farm. The man. And, 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 I and, loved seeing the joy on your face, seeing those animals. It was yeah amazing. man, it was, a, it was a good vibe. So people, yeah. yeah, look, this is the man that brought me down <laughs> to the farm to see the goat. Obviously, it's a connection with bushcraft tools, said way, yeah. So yeah man, our good vibes people. So we're outside and you know what I'm saying? Yeah man, is that, we, we've been having the vibes. Me and bushcraft have been having the vibes and him just turn up because him smell the chicken from far, far, far in I the distance. I could smell it from five kilometers away, so I was here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you see that, people? Smoke had gone up in the, in the trees, so yeah, man, he could see it. He didn't need to ask where we was. Man, they just the man, they just followed the sign. Right, this is the stick I'm going to use for just pushing coals in. I think we're all right. Good heat. Ringo, you know they say five seconds, yeah? Mm -hmm. You know that, don't you? All right, people, you know what I'm going today? We are doing a five second heat test. Come on, Kev. Let's check it out. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's getting hot. Six, one. And all right, bushcraft now. Tell me why the five, five second look. Five second, people. Well, you want it to be about five seconds. Any, if you have to take your hand off any less than five seconds, it's, it usually means the fire's too hot. And if you keep your hand on for more than five seconds, your fire's probably a bit too cold. So I always say one, two, three, it's getting hot, four, five. colors that's coming off of this like you know it's a roast chicken you know yeah man butterfly open up and everything people so you know this is the best way to get a roast chicken because you know like a lot of people roast chicken in the oven but you're gonna not get that crispiness all the way around 360 why because it's whole so we split it in half now as you can see what um bushcraft tools did earlier split it in half and yeah he created um this here, as you can see, he created all of this here, as he described earlier on, for us to place it in the fire, primitive style. You understand, people? Yeah, man, and we're outside, 24 hour kitchen. Yeah, man, cooking with Ringo Vision. We're there. Yeah, man, smoke a guan mad, because you can say cameraman now, a squint and all <laughs> kind of things there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, there is, you can replace this chicken. So if you're not much of a meat eater, you can do exactly the same with a, for example, a whole salmon or a trout. You remove the head and the tail and the backbone, but you leave the fillets attached. So you have 
these two fillets attached like that. And then you know how I put these skewers through the chicken? You do exactly that and then thread that down onto your hazel stick, clamp it, and then bind it again at the top. Um, on the, well, at the top of the stick with, I don't know what, we use a bit of root, cedar root. Yeah. And this is what's happening. Yeah, we're roasting the chicken. As you can see, we've done um, both in both back and, and 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 breast, and we're doing both sides at the moment. Yeah, and we've done the other side. We're just waiting for this side to finish, and then yeah, man, we're outside with the thing. Look at the chicken people. Smells really good. Yeah. Oh, the flavour, the smoky flavour, and that seasoning. Oh, the meat just falls off. It's so hot, I can hardly touch it. Mmm. This is the best chicken ever. This is the best chicken I've ever cooked over a fire. Mm. Nice. As you can see right now, yeah man, the chicken is being consumed people, so look at the colors, what's going on in, this, in, in the chicken people. Look how soft and delicate it's slicing. Yeah man, a mad move. Look at the mayo and garlic sauce. Look at the leg of the chicken, people. Look at the wings, people. Amazing. All right, Ringo, moment of truth. Yeah? Here you are. All right. Try it with the, try it without the dip and then try it with the dip. The wild garlic dip. Mm -hmm. Mad move. Wild garlic dip. Mm. Alright people, I know what time it is, me and Busco after stun of madness, outside in the forest people yeah, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, respect people for staying tuned with this episode, Busco after. Yeah all good. <laughs> <laughs> Alright everyone look at this, the seasoning that we've got on here is a Ringo Vision all purpose mix. Rate it for me, please, Bushcraft. Rate it. Well, it's got a nice, perfect saltiness. I'm going to rate it out of 10. Yeah. This is the sort of spice mix that I've always wanted to have. Like, I do a lot of cooking in the woods, and my merch is all about cooking good in the woods. I've got things like... Anyway, another story for another day. Yeah. But to have my own seasoning mix, yeah. that's a big move. I like that. Yeah. And it's so, it goes so well, you know. It went well with the crab yesterday. Yeah. And it's perfect for this as well. And accompanied by that smoke from the fire. Yeah. Coating it in smoke, lovely smokiness, and then this wild garlic dip. You hear that everyone? Yeah man, everything just complemented each other. The smoke complemented the chicken, the chicken complemented- so juicy as well. Yeah, the chicken complemented the chicken, and the all-purpose mix also complemented the chicken, and we complemented everything. Thank you very much, people, yeah? Goodbye. <laughs>